What's going on YouTube? Lee Brandt here from Octo Developers. Today we're going to create a reusable React component, one that you can pass data to and consume in many different pages. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, like we do with any React app, is scaffold the React app. So we can use Create React App for this. I don't know if you know this, but this is fairly recent, new to me, um, as of this recording anyway. Um, create React App it no longer supports global installs. So if you've installed Re Create React App with like npm install dash g, um, you may want to remove that, and you're going to use npx to run it um, from the web now, I guess. So it's just npx create react app and we'll call it Brewster and this is going to get all the metadata for the app for the scaffold it's going to scaffold the app get all the dependencies for you and when it's all said and done it should say give you instructions on what to do next like um, changing directories into that directory for the app you just created and running it with yarn so um, you can use npm just fine, um, but it comes with yarn by default. So we can see here, go ahead and change directories into Brewster and then run yarn start. So we're going to actually change directories into Brewster, but then we're going to run code and dot um, because I have the command line thing for Visual Studio Code installed. So this is going to open this up in Visual Studio Code. And now I can see with Visual Studio Code, I've got my scaffolded app here. Um, as, well, as well as my node modules folder and, and all that good stuff. So now you have a basic React app um, with Create React app. No longer supported from uh, Global, so it'll still work. Um, but what I got was that you're using an outdated version of Create React app. And this is actually easier. So just you don't have to have anything installed globally. Just using NPX is fine. So the purpose of this uh, component we're going to build is a star rating component. We're going to build an app called Brewster that allows users to rate craft beers. So we're going to use this star rating component in several different places, but we want people to be able to get to their ratings, their specific ratings. So we're going to need an authentication component. We're going to use Okta for this. So you can, if you don't already have an Okta account, you can just go to developer.okta.com. Click on sign up. The sign up form is very simple. It's a free account, no credit card or anything needed. It's always going to be free. Once you've created an account and logged into it, you'll see something that looks like this. This is your Okta dashboard. And once you go to applications, click on add application. And this is going to be a single page app, obviously. And we're going to call it Brewster. Not Brewster, Brewster. Um, we're going to want to change the port that it all runs on and comes from because by default this runs on port 3000. And we're going to want to change this from authorization code to implicit flow because it's a client side only application. So once you click done, you'll be taken to the um, general settings for this application. You'll see implicit is there. Localhost 3000 implicit callback is the login redirect URL. Um, Localhost 3000 is where you initiate it. And you'll have a client ID and uh, Pixie or proof key for code exchange to make client side uh, authentication a little bit more secure than just the regular old implicit flow. Now there's a couple more things we need to make Okta work. Um, come back over here to our command line. We're going to need a couple of packages, so we'll do a yarn add at Okta slash Okta React, and we're going to do it at somewhere about version 1.2.3. Um, we'll also do React Router, React Router DOM. Um, somewhere around version 5.1.2. Point point 
and this will install these two packages and we'll be ready to come back over to our code once those are installed we'll come back over to our code we're going to create a new file in here called .env.local and React will pick these up as environment variables so instead of making you watch me type all of these since I obviously can't type today I'm going to poke these in. Now these you've got your React app Okta client ID which is what the React um, SDK or that that npm package that we just installed that's what it's looking for and the React app Okta org URL and I'll show you where to find both of those. So if we come back over to our client app here's our client ID obviously so I'll just go ahead and copy that come back over to our code and we'll just replace that in here. Now to get your Okta org URL go back up to your dashboard and it's actually right up here at the top, on the right hand side. So we'll just copy that, come back over to our code, and we'll replace this whole thing. Now we've got my Octa.org URL and the React component in there. The last thing we're going to need to do is come into here into source and index.js, and right at the top, right below the import statements, we're going to bring those into a config. So here's my Okta config. We're going to bring in those um, org URLs. And we're going to need to add a couple of imports to our index.js file. I'll put them right above here. We're getting other stuff. So we're going to bring in the browser router from React Router DOM and the security uh, package from or component from Okta React SDK. And in this uh, React DOM.render, we're going to replace this with some stuff. Because we want to be able to wrap this app in the router DOM and in our um, Okta security component. So we do the React, React Router DOM or the React DOM render um, with a browser router around the outside of it with security and we'll use this spread operator to spread all of the values from that into our, so it'd be just the same as passing this whole section in um, as one thing. This is just a little bit cleaner looking. And then we're gonna put, we're gonna wrap that around the app component that we brought in from app. Now that Oct is actually set up to handle user authentication, um, we just need to let the app component know that it's going to be using security. So we come over here to the app component and we're going to bring in some stuff from React Router DOM and the React package. Again, I'm going to cut and paste these in here so you don't have to watch me type all this stuff. But we're going to bring in link and route so that we can um, do some routing in here. And we're going to bring in secure route in the implicit callback so that we can create the implicit callback route and so that we can secure a specific route with um, with Okta. Then let's go ahead and replace this whole app function here. And then we'll walk through what I've done. So I created a nav um, that has the home page and then the rating page. I also did a route to the home page with the exact path of slash. And then I just said use the component home page. Um, this is actually a short way of saying this is the actual component. It's just going to output the text home page. Um, secure route. This is from the React or the uh, React SDK from Okta. Um, the secure route for the exact path slash rating. Make sure it's secure. And we're just going to do the same thing. Component. We're just going to output rating page for now. We'll create the rating page in a little bit. But then for the uh, route implicit callback. This just says that the implicit callback component in the Okta React SDK is going to handle that route. So that's how we actually end up with the ID token spread into a user op, uh, component for us. So now that that's all done, Okta is ready to handle um, authentication. So you can test this out by running yarn start and logging in with it. So let's do that now. 
Okay, so now we're going to test and make sure that that secure route and everything's set up, right? So from the command line in that folder, you just say yarn start. And it'll start up, and this is going to take me to my browser, localhost. We'll see, we've got home and rate. We'll get some styles in there in just a minute. We just want to make sure that the security is set up right. So we're on the home page, it doesn't go anywhere. When you click on rate, it should take us to Okta and have us sign in. When I sign in with the, now I haven't created any other users, but it did create one user for me when I created the account, and that's my admin account. So I can go ahead and log in with that. When I log in with that, we can see that we're on the rating page. Okay, so now my home and rate page are actually there. Um, and uh, rating page is secured, and we're ready to move on to adding a Firebase database to this thing so we can save some stuff. Okay, since we're going to want to save these ratings somewhere, and I don't really want to set up a whole database or anything like that, we're going to use Firebase. It's actually pretty good for smaller projects like this. Um, I know some people who are running some pretty large projects off of it, so I assume it works really well for large projects too. But um, if you don't already have an account, it's just firebase.google.com. You just click on uh, getting started here. Now I already have an account. So... Once you get your account and you get signed in, you'll go to this page and we'll click on Add Project to add our Brewster project. We're going to enter a project name, so we'll call it Brewster. Brewster. And we'll click on Continue. We want to disable um, Google Analytics for this project just because it's a test project. If you're doing this for a real project, you're probably going to want to enable this. And we'll just go ahead and click on Create Project. And this will create, this will stay, this will take a few minutes. So um, I'm just going to pause the video here and we'll come right back. So once it's all done created, uh, you'll see a screen like this. It says your project's ready, ready to go. Click on Continue. You'll be taken to a screen like this. And this is what, what we want to take a look at here. So we're going to add an app to this Firebase. So you need an app to be able to talk to the Firebase database. So um, we're not using an iOS or Android app. It's just a regular web app. So we'll click on web and we're going to call this Brewster. And we don't need Firebase hosting. We're just going to be doing this locally. So we don't need to do any of that. And once we've got that, we'll get this config down here. So we're just going to copy this part of the config inside the script tags. We'll copy this and I'll put this off onto a text file so that we can copy some of those values back out later. All right. Now, we'll continue to the console. Now we have Brewster and we have this app here. We're going to want to add a database to it. So if we click on database. We're going to click on this create database down here. Um, don't be fooled by this. This is the cloud Firestore. We want to use the, um, the real time database. So you scroll down here and it'll say, or choose real time database. So we'll go ahead and create database there and we'll start it in test mode. And what this does is it turns on read and write true for everyone. Now, so it's obviously not what you're going to want to do for production, but this is good for testing. Um, when you get ready to go to production, you're going to want to put it back in locked mode um, and enable your app specifically to be able to read and write to this database. Because right now, anybody with the reference to this database with the URL can actually read and write data from the database. Obviously not ideal for production, but in this case, start. And by default, I think it sets it up to like uh, disable in 30 days. So even if you forget in 30 people, you know, hackers are only going to have 30 days to write data to your test database. We don't really care that much about this anyway. So we'll go ahead and enable that. Now we've got a database that we can write, read and write to. And it says your rules are defined as public. You probably don't want to leave it like that. So, but that's okay. Now we can go back to our code and we can put in those uh, config values so that we can connect to this database. So let's go do that. Okay, now we're ready to add the configuration for Firebase and connect to the Firebase database. 
So what we're going to need to do is remember those values that we got from the configuration that I copied off onto a text file? We're going to copy those into our env.local file. And I'm going to copy all the settings shell over here. Um, it's just react underscore app underscore Firebase underscore API. API key, auth domain, DB URL, project ID, storage bucket, message sender ID, and the app ID. Now these are all there in that config file that we um, that we copied from. So if I copy mine from my text test file, that text file that I copied it into, I can go into my, my API key. There's one called auth domain. I can copy that one out. And all of yours are probably going to look pretty similar. The database URL. The project ID. Our storage bucket. The message sender ID, which is your app. And the app ID. Now, we got all this stuff set up in our environment local. The only other thing we need to do is we need to bring in the NPM package for connecting to Firebase, which is just yarn add, and it's just called Firebase. And we're going to use um, at 7.5.0, which is pretty close to the latest. And this is going to bring in our Firebase package. Once that's all done, we can get back to our code. And we're going to add one more file to our application. Inside of the source directory, we're going to create a file called firebase.js. And this is just going to be used to connect to the Firebase database. And so we're just going to bring in the Firebase package. And we're going to read in all of those keys that we've just set up in the environment local. We're going to initialize the application with our Firebase config. We're going to get a database reference to the database. And we're going to export the, our Brewster reference to the ratings collection that we haven't created yet. But now that that's all done, we should be able to run this thing and connect to the data store. But we don't really have anything saving or doing anything like that yet. So let's go ahead and start creating this star rating component that we set out to create from the beginning. Now I know this may feel like a lot of um, config and set up and you don't have to use Okta, you don't have to use Firebase, but they're very simple ways to get those things done. And if you've never used Okta or if you've never used Firebase, you came here to learn how to write React components and you're getting a threefer. Okay, so let's start creating this rating component. Um, whenever I start creating components, I like to go ahead and create a hierarchy for them. So we'll call it components, the folder inside of um, source components, yes. Um, and inside of the components folder, we'll create a new folder called Raider. And Visual Studio Code now does this thing where since there's only one folder in there, it doesn't create the whole folded out folders. I, I, I don't know. Um, so right click on Raider and we'll just add a new file called star rating.jsx star rating.jsx make sure i type that right okay we'll also create another file in here called star rating.css so we can have a little we can style it a little bit so in the star rating.jsx file this is what we're going to put in i just copied a whole bunch of stuff in there it's a lot to unpack so let's just take it piece by piece, okay? Before I forget, I'm gonna save that file. Um, we brought in React and Component from React like you always do, pretty self-explanatory. We're also gonna import the star rating CSS file that we just created 
pretty self-explanatory, but here's where we start getting into stuff. Okay, so we've got our, um, our class that's called star rating. Uh, it extends a React component, like you do. Um, the constructor takes the props in, passes them up to the super, the props, the page, the, com the uh, consuming component. Um, and <clears throat> it's also going to set the state um, because we're going to be able to pass in this thing called current rating. This way, when we load that rating component, we can set a current rating for it. Like if it's already been rated, if you're setting up this rater on, a, on say, a list of beers and they've already been rated, then you can go ahead and set that rating and you don't have to wait for somebody to click on something to set a rating. So we're going to want a current rating for it. And we'll go ahead and set the current rating um, in the state of the prop, uh, state of the component from the props current rating. Okay. And in the component did mount, we're going to run this dot set rating. Now what this does is it takes that current rating that you passed in and it does the visual part of it where this goes through and it gets all the stars out of a reference to a component called star uh, with a, it's going to get every, every element with a class of star inside of a reference to a component called rating. Now, if we look down here, here's the rating component and we've got a ref to rating. So when we say this dot refs dot rating, that's where it's going to start looking and it looks for everything with a class of star inside that. Then we're going to create an array from that. That's just a collection by default, an HTML collection, which we don't want. We want an array from those stars for each one of those stars. This is so we can loop through them. We're going to set the stars style color to either yellow or gray, depending on whether the current rating is greater than or equal to the value of that star. Now this may seem a little bit um, opaque right now just because we haven't talked about the stars that are going to be showing there. But just know that this starts looking through the stars and it takes the current rating and it goes, hey, this is set one of the star. Um, is the rating higher than or equal to that? If it is, make that one yellow. Is the rating two or higher? Set that one yellow. And once it gets to like three or whatever, whatever the rating is, if it's below that or above that, then we're going to make those gray so that it, we can see a rating of two would have the first two stars highlighted yellow and the last three or however many stars we tell it are going to be gray. Now, when I say however many stars we tell it, that's because there's one other thing that we actually pass into this component and that's the number of star ratings we want to have. Now, we all might be used to like a five star rating system, but you might want to have a one out of ten rating, right? Um, and we're going to use stars in this, but you could, that's just because when I put this down here, we can see this is our array and we're going to create the, from number of stars, this little thing here just converts that number of stars to, uh, an integer instead of being a string by default, the props are going to be passed in as attributes. So they're going to be coming in as strings. Some people might call this a down and dirty way of doing it instead of doing like a two int or whatever. Um, but this is just an easy way to convert it. So whatever the number of stars is that you passed in, let's say it's five because you're used to a five star rating. Um, it's going to loop through those keys, which is the first part of that. And it's going to map it out to a bunch of spans with this hex value in it, which is the hex value for a star. Um, we're going to give it a class name of star. We're going to get a, give it a key of N plus one. By default, arrays are zero based, so we want it to be one, two, three, and four. We also want the data value of that star because we're going to use that in how they're rated. Um, we're going to make the data value one through whatever. Um, we also have a couple of things here. The on mouse over event is set and the on click event is set for each one of these stars. So as we hover over this, we're going to want this hover handler and star click handler. So let's take a look at the hover handler. So here's the hover handler and all it does is the same thing that the set rating kind of does except for as you hover over it, it checks to see which which star you're on and it gets the data set value. This data value here, it gets that and it does the same thing. It says if you're hovered over number two, then we want to set number one and number two to yellow and all the rest of them to gray. And if you move over and hover over three, then th the first three become yellow. 
And if you move back and hover over just the first star, then only the first star is yellow and all the rest of them are gray, right? Just the way you would expect a star rating system kind of component to, to behave. The last thing is this star click handler. So when they actually click on one of those stars, what we want to do is we want to get the data set value of that star that you just clicked on, and we want to set the state of the current rating to that rating. And we're also going to do, um, we're going to prop this up. So we're going to send this back to onClick. We're going to emit that event back up to the parent so the parent can do something with it. Because we don't know if the parent wants to save it or not. But the first set state, this current rating, all that does is that means that when you mouse off of it, it goes back to whatever the current rating is. Okay, And the current rating is now whatever you've just clicked on. So let's say the original current rating was 2. So we had two yellow stars and three gray stars, assuming that the number of stars you wanted was five. Okay, so we've got two yellow stars and three gray stars. Now, when you hover over it, it's going to hover up, and one. once you hover over one, one is the only one that's going to be highlighted. It's the only one that's going to be yellow, and there'll be four gray stars. And as you hover up, two will be turned yellow, three will turn yellow, four will turn yellow. And if you click on four, then it sets the current rating to 4, so that when you hover off, 4 stay highlighted, and it doesn't go back to whatever the current rating was. By default, if you don't click on anything and you hover over it, it'll turn them yellow as it goes. But then when you move back off of it, it's going to set that rating back to 1 or 2 or whatever the, whatever the last rating was that was clicked on. But we do want to tell the parent, hey, they've checked, they've, selected a new rating, they've checked a new rating, um, do whatever you want to do with that and pass the rating up to them. Okay. And in this case, our page is going to actually save that to uh, a database. So that is the rating component in a nutshell. Um, we'll do a little bit more with it um, here in just a minute when we start to consume it. All right, now we've got our rating component. Let's go ahead and put this on a page. Now this is just my personal preference, but inside of source, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder here called pages. And this will hold all my page components. In this case, this is going to be, they're going to be dealing with rating pages. So I'm going to create another folder called rating. Then I'm going to create a file in here and we'll call this rating page.jsx. And we'll also create a style page to go, or a style sheet to go with it. So we'll call it rating page dot CSS, if I can type. All right. Now, in the CSS, um, we'll get back to that in just a minute. But let's use, let's see how we're going to um, consume this rating component. Again, I'll just cut and paste all this in and we'll talk about it. So, I'm bringing in React component from React. Um, I'm also bringing in that Brewster ref from the Firebase um, uh, thing that we just set up. I'm bringing in the star rating component from components rater star rating, the one we just created. Um, I'm also bringing in the rating page CSS. So, let's go ahead and take a look at the CSS real quick because it's pretty self-explanatory and I don't want to get bogged down in the CSS for it. But I do want it to. I do want it to be there, so I want to get it in there, and then you can uh, copy it. So it's just pretty straightforward. I've got a rating form, a heading for the rating form that I want the font size to be a little bit bigger. I'm going to set the background color and the heading to black, and set the color to white, um, so I can make kind of a formy looking form. None of this is um, super out of the box thinking. Um, I'm not a designer. Just want it to look nice enough that you can actually tell what it is. Now, back to our rating page. Um, we've got our rating page class that extends components. We're going to get props from and send props back up to whoever's consuming us, like you do. Um, I'm going to set the state to these initial values. The name, description, rating, and the user. So the name is going to be the name of the beer that they're rating. The description, they can put anything they want in there, like really spicy um, stout or this is a really citrusy hoppy IPA whatever um, the rating is going to be initially set to zero but 
That's just because we don't want any of them highlighted. And then the user we're actually going to get from the Okta React uh, SDK, which is why we brought in with auth. Okay. And we'll see that at the bottom. Um, if you've never seen higher order components before, with auth is a higher order component that we're going to wrap this whole rating page component in when we export it. So we've got our component did mount. And one of the first things this is going to do is it's going to make a call to an async operator on the auth package that we just brought in, the with auth. Um, so we're going to run this get user and it's an asynchronous operation. So component did mount needs to be asynchronous, asynchronous so we can use await. Um, and then we're going to set the, set the state's user to whatever the user's email is. That way we can get it back out later. We know the user's email is going to be unique. So now, um, here's our basic component. We've got our form rating form. We saw that from the CSS, this is going to be wrapped and we've got a heading that's going to be black background with uh, white text that says rate a beer. Um, it's got a beer label and then the text name is on this change. Uh, this input is going to run this handle change event and same with the description. It's going to run this handle change event and I'm just using a text area. Um, same thing with this. Uh, the class name is going to be the rating and then we're going to put the label in there that says rating, but we're going to put the star rating component in there and we're going to say the number of stars that we want to use. Remember that was a prop we passed in. The number of stars is going to be five. So it's going to display five stars. The current rating is going to be zero when we, when we display it. And then the on click event is going to handle this, this dot set rating. Okay. So that on click event that we had in here that gets bubbled up this props dot on click. The rating page is going to say whenever that on click event is bubbled up from the component, handle it with the set rating. Okay. So now we've got our, um, our submit button for the, with the on click save rating. We'll get to that in just a second, but none of this is groundbreaking except for this. This is the, the only stuff you're going to care about for the rating component that you've just created. So we've got star rating. We've got number of stars, current rating that we're passing in, and we're also passing in a handle to this on click event so that the star rating component can actually bubble that thing back up that on click event, call it with the rating. Okay. Now let's look at some of these events. So we've got the handle change and all we're going to do is we're going to set the state in the state, whatever the event targets name is to whatever the event targets value is. This is a cool little trick. If you have a bunch of forms that you want their names to line up with their values in the state, it's pretty straightforward because this has a name of name and it's going to line up with this here. So all I have to do is say this dot set state, whatever the event target name is and the value. Okay. So pretty straightforward, but it's a neat little trick instead of having to say handle name change, handle description change, that sort of thing. It would be okay here because we only have two fields, but if you had a bunch of fields, it'd be kind of rough. And then we've got a set rating that just takes in that rating and sets the state's rating to whatever rating you just clicked on in that event, because that's what we did. We set the on click event to run the set rating and the set rating is going to pass up whatever rating we clicked on. In this case, like four, if I moved over and clicked on number four, it's going to pass four up and then the set rating up here is going to run with four. It's going to set the state. Now the last thing is this save rating that's going to get that Brewster ref and it's going to push a new value on it and it's going to set that value to whatever this dot state is. Because basically what we're going to do is take this state as a JSON document and push it onto a collection of JSON documents in the Brewster, in that Brewster ref uh, ratings collection in Firebase. And then we're going to actually push onto the prop histories. We're going to, on the history, we're going to move over to the ratings list page, which is what we need to create next. That's going to take us. So basically once you've added your beer name, you've added the description, you've clicked on whatever you want it to be. Then you click save. It pushes it up to Firebase and then it takes you to a rating listing page. This is, this shows you all the beers you've rated to date. 
And so that's the next thing we need to create is that ratings list page. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do is we're going to create a listing page for all the ratings that this user has created. So up in our pages, we're going to create a new folder. We're going to call this folder uh, rating list. And this is where all the stuff for rating list pages is going to go. In this case, we want a rating dash list dot CSS file. And we want a rating list, rating dash list dot JSX file. Okay. Now in the CSS, all I'm going to do is I'm going to set some styles for this table that we're going to display the ratings in. Voila. Nothing super complicated here. I'm setting the table with 80%, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now, here's the actual component. So let me go ahead and cut and paste this from my clipboard over here. So again, we're bringing in with auth because we're going to want to wrap it in with auth, which I probably didn't mention when we exported it before. We just exported that default with auth and wrapped it, wrapped the rating page with the with auth. That way we can get to this props.auth.getUser. Same thing here. Um, we're going to wrap this in the with auth, and when we export it, we're going to export it as a with auth. Then we've got the Brewster ref um, to get uh, access or a reference to the Firebase database. And then we've got our CSS file. So we've got our props. We've just got a, an empty array of ratings, and we've got the user. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run this const, you're going to get this const user. Again, this needs to be async so we can use await. And we're going to do props.auth.getUser. Again, this comes from this with auth component that's built into the React SDK from Okta. Then we're going to take the Brewster ref and we're going to order it by child user. And we'll make sure that it's with the, uh, where the, where the user is equal to the user's email. Okay, then on value, so this is the way uh, um, Firebase works. Uh, it's a real-time asynchronous database. So here we're going to order by child, and on that value, we're going to get the snap value, um, and we're going to put it into a response. Then we're going to loop through each one of those ratings that we got in the response, and we're going to push that onto our ratings array. So push that onto the ratings array. Now you might think, dude, you already created a ratings array up here in state that was empty. Why create another one again here and then set the state down below? This is just because remember that React is set up so that anytime you change the state, it's going to update the UI. We don't want to do that. We want to push all those ratings into an array and then push all the ratings, set all the ratings in the state all at once so that we only redraw the page one time. If you've got a hundred ratings in here, you're going to, if you push into that um, state ratings array, you're going to redraw the page a hundred times. You don't want to do that. You just want to redraw the page one time with all 100 ratings. Does that make sense? So now that we've got the ratings in the set state, um, all we need is our component. So we've got our table here. We've got the beard, description, and the rating. And we're just going to loop through each one of those ratings and map it right out. So with that rating, we'll do the rating ID for the key. Remember, if you're looping through anything in React, you need a key for it. Okay. So we've got our rating name, our rating description, and our ratings rating. Our rating rating. Okay. So now all of that, sh all of that should be ready to go. We should be able to display this page and log in and start making some beer ratings. So let's check it out. Okay. So if you decided to stop the video there and try and run it by yourself, you may have noticed we don't really have any ratings to all of this. Remember in our app, we just actually output rating page as a text thing, right? We didn't use the actual component. So now we need to go back and actually add the, the routing to these components. 
So the way we're going to do this is we're going to go back to our uh, app.js file and we're going to change it completely. Well, not completely. Let me just save this before I forget. So in our app.js, this is what it should look like now. So we've still got our route, secure route, and all that stuff. But we brought in the rating page and the rate, ratings listing page. And we've got our rate link to go to the ratings and the rating list to go to the listing of the ratings. Because I don't necessarily want to have to go through the ratings page to get to my ratings list. I mean, just want to log in and go to my ratings list, right? So we still got our homepage component that doesn't really do anything but output the text homepage. Okay. We've got a secure route to the ratings and we've secure route to the ratings list. We've still got our route for implicit callback, but the components going to be handled. The exact path to slash rating is going to be the rating page component. And the rating list path is going to be handled by the rating list page component. Now, the only other thing we might need to do, just to make it a little bit prettier, this app.cs, we don't actually have a whole lot of styling in here that goes with our stuff. So let's just delete all of that, and we'll put in some stuff to make our page look just a little bit nicer. So we're going to set the background color of the nav to 3333. Um, we're going to uh, set the font size of the navigation to 1.5. Um, set a couple of link colors, nothing super groundbreaking here, but this just will make our, our app look a little bit nicer. So now you can actually run this thing. All right. Now here's the moment we've been waiting for. If I haven't screwed anything up, we should be able to run this thing and start rating some beers. So if I run yarn start. fire me right up into my application. Now, since I had never logged out before, I'm not going to need to log in again. So, but you can, if you want to, you could come over here to your Okta uh, organization and run a logout and you could log yourself out of the application. But I want to, let's rate Boulevard Beat. Since I'm from Kansas City, this is a good uh, middle of the road wheat beer. Not too sweet. And here's my rating. Now when I hover over it, you can see it turns. If I come back off, I haven't actually set a rating yet. I set it to four, then I can submit the rating. And it takes me to my ratings page and it gets that stuff from the database. And if I come over here to my Brewster database, we'll see there's actually a new rating. It created the ratings collection for me. Um, it's got my good middle of the road beer, not too sweet, Boulevard Wheat, rating four, and Librant at gmail.com. That's me. Okay? So there I am with my ratings. And I can come back here and rate a couple more. I had uh, Bully Porter in here, which is a good, it's winter time here in Kansas City. Porters are great for winter time, so, uh, good Porter, nice, creamy flavor with good hemp. And uh, we'll give it a three out of five. Nice. So now what you've learned is not only how to create a React component that you can reuse in several ways, because you see we're reusing it um, in a couple of different places, um, but you, you've actually created this component that you can reuse. You've hooked it up to a Firebase real-time database, and you're saving and reading to that database, um, and you've set up authentication using Okta. Very quick, very simple, very easy to do. Now, the challenge for you, reuse that component again and just put it in here in the rating, allowing the, uh, not allowing the, the person to change their rating and having to go in to the form to change the rating. That's the challenge for you. Um, 
Other than that, um, we create content. If you like this content here, um, make sure you hit the like button down below and subscribe. We release new content every Tuesday and Thursday. So um, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the little bell icon so you get notified when new content is coming out. And uh, we'll see you next time.